Stockman, David Stockman. Uh, it's, been, it's been too long. Welcome back to the program. Very happy to be with you, Tom. Thanks for joining us. Back when the, uh, when the tax bill was passed, you know, right. just a short while ago, I went on the air on this, on this program and I said, okay, we've got the Fed un unspooling quantitative easing, which means essentially that they're selling treasury bonds back into the marketplace. And we've got, uh, you know, and, and, and we're going to have to borrow a trillion and a half dollars, which means issuing more bonds, selling them into the marketplace. And when these things hit the market, uh, all hell is going to break loose. And frankly, in my head at the time, I thought that that stuff was going to happen soon after the legislation was signed. And it wasn't until I read your piece today, and you pointed out that it starts with the new fiscal year, the, the federal fiscal year, which is October, October 1st, that that is when this whole process begins that could just bring everything down around us. Am I, uh, num so number one, thank you for that. Number two, uh, it, it was my summary of that. Did that make sense? And number three, you know, what are your thoughts on all this? Okay, well, that, that's great because you hit the nail right on the head. Uh, there is going to be a massive monetary fiscal collision of a type that I haven't seen in my entire lifetime. And I started on Capitol Hill way back in 1970 because beginning in October this year, uh, fiscal 2019, we are going to have the Fed, for the first time in history, selling bonds in large magnitude at the same time that the federal deficit is exploding from this, what I call, asinine tax cut, uh, untimely, unpaid-for tax cut. And when you put the two together, you have a, a real monstrous equation. They will, The Treasury will be dumping uh, 1.2 trillion of new debt into the market somebody's got to buy it the fed will be dumping by october 600 billion into the market at an annual rate and i'll explain that in a second and nobody's changed uh, the rules of arithmetic that's 1.8 trillion of federal paper federal debt that has to find a home in the bond pits down on Wall Street and other financial markets around the world. And they're now, offering Frank, and they're offering this at two point nine percent, less than less than <coughs> under three percent right now. Who's going to buy yeah, that? that? That's that's the point. Markets always do clear, but it's at which level depends on supply and demand. And there has been no increase in the supply. In fact, the savings rate in the United States is nearly at an all time low under three percent and the other central banks of the world which for a while were helping the fed out by their own quantitative easing policies which meant the ecb was buying up massive amounts of debt in europe but european investors then could make almost nothing owning uh for instance uh you know the debt of uh, germany uh, uh the bund so they bought U.S. dollar-denominated debt and helped uh, ease the situation in the U.S. But the reason I bring all this up is beginning in October, uh, the ECB and the Europeans are out of quantitative easing as well. That's number one. Second, Draghi's term is up, and I say good riddance. I mean, mm. he's been a crazy man money printer. And uh, for better or worse, it's the Germans' term, uh, turn to take over the ECB. And, of course, they're much more uh, hard money hawkish uh, than uh, the rest of the ECB. And certainly they're not going to continue to buy debt hand over fist. But in fact, so the opposite. They're going to want to dump it. They're going to begin to shrink their balance sheet as well. Right. And I think eventually all the uh, central banks of the world are. This is really important. Even in China, now that... Mr. Xi has been coronated as the permanent uh, new emperor, which is what, you know, uh, the 19th Party Congress was all about. They let the system run and credit just explode uh, in the last uh, two years to make sure they had a booming co economy and everything was rosy and copacetic for the 19th Party Congress in October. That's over. And even uh, Mr. Xi and uh, the rulers in Beijing understand that if they don't get their 40 trillion debt uh, monster bubble under control, they're going to lose control. And uh, 
you know, a communist regime doesn't last long unless the people are happy because the economy is booming. So we, the reason I go into this is so you're going to have China uh, curtailing dramatically its central bank uh, uh, expansion as well. And I think as we get into this trade war, which is another whole vector of the thing, they're going to be very reluctant to add to the $1.2 trillion of Treasury debt they already have. In fact, for both internal monetary reasons and for, uh, you know, <laughs> retali retaliatory reasons, right. they're likely to be dumping. So if China is dumping, if the ECB is dumping, if the Fed is dumping, if the Treasury now is trying to borrow what is equivalent to 6% of GDP, not at the bottom of a recession, when arguably, you know, Keynesians think you ought to borrow a lot, and I don't, but we're not at a bottom of a recession in 2009. We're at the third longest expansion in history, and soon it will be the longest, you know, we're in month 104 already, the longest business expansion we've ever had was 119 months in the 90s. So if you're at the tail end of a business, uh, business expansion, at the top of the cycle, there's nothing ahead but a recession sooner or later. Right. The last time in the world that you should be massively increasing the deficit is exactly now. So this, I think, is the most irresponsible fiscal policy in modern history, and I've seen a lot of them, including what I had to try to. But it handed hope. it handed billions of dollars to a bunch of billionaires. I mean, you yeah. know, just now here's the here's the, so well, it handed billions of dollars. I might say that we borrowed uh, uh, over time to corporations on the misguided theory that they're going to spend it on raising wages, hiring more people, and investing. Uh, you know, more heavily than they have been wrong. 90% yeah. of that is going to go into stock buybacks and dividends. We've already seen record rates in the last two months, exactly as I and many others, uh, probably you two, were uh, predicting mm -hmm. at $200 yeah. billion dollars, uh, of buybacks announced just in the last 90 days. It's at a run rate of $800 billion a year, which will be, you know, they'll be tickled pink down on Wall Street, and the 1% will get a great windfall out of this because it'll tend to uh, prop up stocks, which are otherwise, I think, you know, in a... Well, I think it's point. one of the major things that is holding the stock market together, that and the plunge protection team, which I wanted to ask you about. <laughs> yeah. um, it, it, it sounds like October is going to be the perfect storm. And when I read October in your piece this morning, I thought, whoa, October 1929 was the last yeah. time we had this conversation. Yeah, and, you know, and we also, uh, you know, really, we thought the other one started in September. I guess t t uh, technically it did. Uh, with the Lehman Brothers in 2008, but the real uh, crunch came in October of 2008. Yeah. So there seems to be a bit of jinx on October. I, I don't believe in any kind of monetary uh, magic. But uh, next October, the rubber is going to meet the road. There is no doubt about it. And get ready. Uh, David, uh, and David, get ready. David, forgive yeah, my interrupting the yields, you. I might just say one thing on that. Sure. Uh, the yields are going to soar from 292 or wherever they are at the moment, easily through three, up towards four and beyond. And there's an important reason that I think uh, people need to understand, and that is we have sh we've had an epical shift now, finally, reluctantly, by the central banks from years of QE, quantitative easing, where they're buying bonds and helping governments finance their deficits uh, with, you know, fiat money, to QT, and we've never seen it before, and not just uh, quantitative tightening and not just a little they'll be ramping up to what I say is a 600 billion run rate uh, by October. Right. And Which is unsustainable. It, yeah, and, and see, but what's going to happen, and this is the key part, during QE, all the smart guys down on Wall Street, the hedge funds and fast money traders and, and so forth, said, hmm, if the Fed is going to be buying like they were 80 billion a month of bonds, and they're even telling us ahead of time, what maturities and what they call QCIP numbers, the actual uh, uh, issue of the bond they're going to be buying. Well, we're going to buy them ahead of time because when the Fed buys, the price goes up, the yield goes down, we make capital gains, plus we you know, buy these bonds and borrow 95 cents on a dollar anyway. So it was 
the greatest game of, uh, you know, windfall profit, uh, profiteering that's ever happened. They were front-running what the Fed and the other central banks were buying. Here's the thing. When we go into QT, and they haven't figured this out at the Fed, they're going to be selling what the Fed is selling. Okay, right. They're going to be shorting the bond, which means that the yield is going to rise even more and oh, the price explode. is going to drop even more. Yeah. That da would otherwise be the case. David, I'm sorry. We're hitting a hard break here. I, uh, but I really appreciate your coming on. I hope we can talk again soon. Um, we will. David Stockman's ContraCorner.com. Hang on. To Tom Hartman. Visit and TomHartman.com for audio and video archives. And you can tweet him at DA underscore Stockman. David Stockman, thank you. Okay, great. Great, great, great speaking with you, Tom. Yeah.